In this video, we are going to use the database from Roseville, Minnesota, homes sold in 1997, around 260 some homes. But instead of using the multiple regression tools of Excel, we're going to use the neural net uh, tools of Palisade Decision Suites. So let's bring that in at the moment. We'll just go to the Office button, All Programs, Palisade Decision Tools, Neural Tools, Version 6. And once loaded, we'll have an extra menu item, I guess I'll say, in Excel, allowing us to do a neural network training on our database. The neural network will use the same predictors that we had for multiple regression, except for this time we'll include the style of the home. As with all of the Palisade Decision Suite tools, it's worth your time to go through the quick start, the interactive tutorial, the guided tour. There's much more than I'll be able to show you in a quick video of what these tools can do. First thing, we have to tell um, NeuralNet what our database is. So I'm just going to click someplace inside here. Go to the Data Set Manager. It says, do you want to add this range that is highlighted as a new data set? And I'll say, yes, I do. We have to do some changing here. We can change the name, but I'm OK with data set number one. Notice that it looked at the uh, values and said the price should be an independent numeric variable. Actually, that's my dependent, so I'm going to have to change that. There we go. To dependent numeric, that's the one I want to predict. Number of bedrooms, independent, the predictor variable. Year built, I'm going to click on that and say, I actually don't want to use the year built for anything. Come on, there we go. Unused. And the style, I'm going to change to an independent categorical variable independent category variable. That's the um, uh, style of the home, 1.5 story, four level split, Rambler. We can now include that in our analysis. I still don't think these uh, variables are sufficient to accurately predict selling price, but I wanted to show you how easy it is to add a categorical variable in without producing a code. I think we're all set, so I'm just going to click on OK. Now, what we need the neural net to do is to learn from this database what the selling price will be. And uh, that's called training. So I'm going to go through the training menu item. And um, we're going to leave pretty much everything has set. Automatically test on randomly selected cases. So it'll randomly select some cases to set aside, not train with them, but use them to test. 20% seems about right. Enable live prediction. Uh, I'll show you how that turns out at the end. The net configuration, what kind of net is it going to be, uh, we'll leave as is. Um, you'll see that, um, generally speaking, Neural Tools has its own set of tool, uh, defaults that it can use. I'll leave it as a default, but you can change the net to other kinds of nets. I'm just going to click on Next. And... Um, for instance, you notice it says the independent categorical variable has seven categories. And I am going to click on Train. And what will happen here is the neural net is going through. You'll see some windows pop up. Oh, it's done already. Would you like to view the testing sensitivity dialog? That I'm actually not going to do at this point. I'm just going to say no. So in a very short time, what has happened is the Neural Net program has gone through the database um, trying to predict the selling price that it sees in column A by um, creating a neural net. And I'll have to go through details of that in some other video. Let's go and see what sort of things we get to see. Residuals on the training variable, the data, the 80% of the database that it used to train on. Here's zero. That's what we want, zero residuals. Notice there's some fairly large residuals in both the positive and negative. Well, that's simply because the four variables, five variables with the style, are really not sufficient to uh, predict the actual selling price of a home. 
Here's the actual selling price of a home and the predicted. You'd, of course, want everything to line up perfectly along a straight line. It doesn't quite do that. There's the 20% that were set aside for testing. Sorry, this is still training. So this is the 80%. Here's the predicted versus the residual. So you can see the residual. Notice that um, the residuals for small selling prices are fairly large. And for large selling prices are also quite large. You've got an interesting case here of a $100,000 residual. And now we're same set of uh, graphs, but now for the 20% that we reserve for testing. We want zero residuals. Notice we have some negative, some positive, and the same sorts of graphs. Let's take a look back at our database so you can see what we have here. Here is the results. It used the first several uh, database homes for training, but it did reserve this uh, row number 17 for testing. It says the residual is around $16,000 negative. It sold for 114. The predicted value from the neural net is 130,000. And you can see that there was a really bad um, residual of $65,000 for the 21st home. And you can scroll down to see even more if you wish. Now, one of the bad things, perhaps, about a neural net is that you know, in multiple regression, you can actually see an equation. Uh, gets printed out. There's no equation that we can look at here, so it's you may ask yourself, how in the world do I actually try to predict? I have a neural net that's supposed to predict selling prices, but how do I use it? I don't have an equation. And that can be done with this enable live prediction that we put in previously. I'll talk about that in the next video.